Artist's Way by Julia Cameron Just at the time when most people will get rejected by publishers and allow their books gather up dust, a fine young woman in the 1990s wasn't taking no for an answer. Long before Amazon was around and self-publishing became a trend, Julia Cameron self-published The Artist's Way after it was turned down by a publisher. Her book since then has become a major bestseller. Here are our 5 favorite lessons to help you find back to the artist's way. By the way, if this is your first time on our channel, welcome and consider subscribing because we'll help you discover secrets of success from the world's best books and great people. Lesson number 1. Give your creativity the chance to run freely by writing morning pages. Julia Cameron most likely wouldn't have become a best-selling author if she didn't write morning pages. Before becoming a globally acclaimed author, she was a Hollywood screenwriter and had just written a movie for popular American actor and father of actress Angelina Jolie, John Voight. Voight's partner called her up and said, it's brilliant. And then she waited endlessly for a call that never happened. Julia was sort of stuck with the feeling of, oh my god, I have this brilliant movie and she can't get him on the phone. So, she started writing morning pages as a way to comfort herself. And that was how morning pages began for her. As at that time, Julia was living in Taos in a little adobe house at the end of a dirt road. She felt like, what happened in my career? And started doing morning pages. After doing them for a couple of months, a character for a novel strode into them. She went off and wrote a novel and that's how she got the notion that the pages were healing because she had healed herself. Till today, Julia still says that if they had returned her phone call, she would still be a Hollywood screenwriter and the artist's way won't have been birthed. So, what's the lesson here? First thing in the morning, sit down, let your thoughts out and just write down whatever comes to your mind. Make it a page or two. You don't have to push yourself to start big, start small. See morning pages as a form of meditation. A way to just let your creativity flow without building barriers around it. Do this for a week and watch as magical things start to unfold. Lesson number 2 If you have writers, singers or painters block, just let other people give you ideas. I love coming up with ebook titles, course ideas for other clients. The scary part is what comes afterwards, writing the article. Even as someone who's written thousands of words, starting with a blank page is still very scary and I'm no exception. World-class writers struggle with this. A great tip from popular American author Seth Godin is to write like you talk. That's a great advice. You know why? Because nobody gets talkers block. <laughs> Julia Cameron has another awesome idea and it works for any kind of block. Writer's block, singer's block, painter's block, whatever block might be. It's as simple as it is efficient. Let other people give you prompts. She even accredits that most of the success garnered from the artist's way began when she shared her ideas about creativity with a few friends in her living room 25 years ago. So, go to a friend, family member or ask your audience, what do you want me to write about? What song should I sing? What motive should I paint? And then just do that. Trust me, not only will you feel free about not thinking up what you create for a while, you'll be in an entirely different place, ready to take on what's next when you're done. Lesson number 3 Ideas are already out there. Your job as an artist is to take good care of them and watch them grow. Italian sculptor, painter and architect and poet Michelangelo D. 
didn't create David. Rather, he said he found him. Isn't that humility? You can imagine one of the world's greatest artists taking no credit for one of the best artworks in history. He just says he found the idea and happened to be the one chiseling away at that block of stone at the right time to make it happen. But this is more than humility. It's a tool. The minute you stop thinking of yourself as an idea generator and instead see yourself as a vessel that ideas just happen to flow through as you find them out in the world, you take all the creative pressure off. A gardener doesn't create a tree. A gardener plants a seed and then he takes good care of it, hoping it will one day bloom and turn into a big beautiful tree. Being a gardener of ideas is all you have to do as an artist. So, find them, take care of them, help them grow and watch what happens next. Be a good gardener, okay? Lesson number 4. Don't give up. When you're talking about success personified, one of the people that comes to mind is billionaire entrepreneur Sir Richard Branson. According to him, on every adventure he has been on, whether setting up a business, flying around the world in a balloon, taking a hike in the woods or racing across the ocean in a boat, there have been moments when the easy thing to do will be to give up. However, not giving up makes him push himself to achieve that goal, which is one of the reasons why he's immensely successful, both personal and professional. Oh. And we have to tell you he's an avid writer. If you don't write down your ideas, they could be gone by the morning, Branson says. He makes sure that he makes a list of upcoming plans or company plans. His book, Finding My Virginity, is also one of the world's most read and best-selling books. Lesson number 5 never succumb to the whims of a crazy maker. Crazy makers are like parasites. They are always on the prowl, looking for victims to feed upon. Don't fall into the clutches of a crazy maker, a person who feeds on your attention while downgrading you as well. One way to identify crazy makers is that they have a penchant for surrounding themselves with talented artists who lack self-esteem and confidence. Remember, don't let a crazy maker prey on you. You're the only person who has the right to your own creativity. So, be ready to sing, dance, doodle, draw, sculpt, recite, write, design, paint, spray, or whatever you used to love way back when you were an artist or kid. It's your time to reignite. Now, let's discuss. What lessons do you think I missed in this book? What points would you like to add? Which other good books would you like our team to summarize next? We love to receive your comments. If you love this summary, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. And if you've not subscribed to our channel, subscribe now and turn on the notification because we'll help you discover the secrets of success from the world's best books and great people. We love you.